I can't believe I'm recording this at um eight o'clock at night. This is really dumb. Natural light's supposed to be a thing you're supposed to do for videos and there is no light outside. <laughs> Hey, it's Becca and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you guys are new. So I'm sure if you guys have watched Stranger Things season four, you're probably a part of the online discourse surrounding the show and have probably seen the immense amount of hate that Mike Wheeler has been getting, especially after this most recent season. Um, it definitely seems like he is the character that has been drawing the short straw when it comes to the writing of the show, and I thought it would be interesting to take a deeper dive and try and figure out why. <laughs> Mike was definitely one of my favorite characters when it came to the first couple of seasons, so seeing the way that he has been written for seasons three and four was a little bit confusing for me, and I really want to know why. So, that is what I'm here to do today. Mike has clearly become the punching bag for fans, with most fans saying that he was the character they would have cared the least about if he had died in Volume 2. So I want to take a deep dive into his character and analyze all of the different actions and choices that he makes throughout the entire show. After each season, I'm going to break down one relationship that is important to Mike because Mike is definitely a character that is very much driven by those around him, so I thought it would be really interesting to just break down a lot of those friendships that he does have. This is definitely going to be a much longer video than I am used to. Um, the script that I wrote for this is 33 pages long, which is really long, and I'm not used to this. So yeah, I know it's going to be a little bit of a different format, but I had some fun writing this. I was mostly fueled by Hayloft 2 for some reason. That got me through writing like over half of this script, but I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, let's just get into it. When looking back at season one, it's hard not to see Mike as the main character of like all of the kids other than maybe Eleven. That was certainly the impression that I got when I first watched the show and was shocked to see the dwindling screen time that he gets as the seasons go on. When we first see Mike, he is the dungeon master for his party's D&D group, and he is leading them through apparently a 10-hour campaign. As the group's like de facto DM, he is certainly comes across as like the leader of the group. Included in this group is Dustin, Lucas, and Will, and from what we can see, Mike is quite the storyteller and is doing quite a good job at crafting his campaign to seem intriguing to the other members of the party. The whole idea of Mike as a leader is definitely backed up by how the group treats him moving forward when it comes to looking for Will. They definitely tend to look to him for what to do and the answers more often than not. In the same vein, Mike is definitely the one that seems to spearhead the search for Will once they find out that he is missing. While Lucas definitely disagreed with the methods that Mike was going about to try and find Will, which was mainly using Eleven, it definitely, like, there was no doubt that Mike really wanted to try and find his best friend. I mean, after they find Will's body and the quarry, it seems like Mike really keeps Eleven around, like, in that specific moment just because they, he still has hope that she'll be able to find Will. Now, I don't want that to seem like it's the only reason that he keeps her around, but it's definitely one of the main reasons that he doesn't just, like, kick her to the curb. And I think that this kind of establishes one of Mike's main characteristics, which is his loyalty. As I said earlier, Mike is the one that spearheads the party's search for Will. Will is obviously his main concern this season, and a lot of the conversations that he has with Eleven in the early parts of the season pertain to Will specifically. We get to really see how much Will's disappearance affected Mike after they find his fake body in the quarry, and we see him break down in his mom's arms following that. It really shows how much of an impact this is having on him, and I think that's a really important thing that we get to see. And this also really just demonstrates Mike's 
loyalty to his best friend and how much Will means to him in this season. For this season, Mike does whatever he thinks is best in order to try and find his best friend. And for him, that is obviously using Elle. She immediately recognizes Will in the science fair picture despite never actually having met him. So to Mike, this is like the clear and most obvious solution for him. Eleven also clearly possesses some sort of knowledge about what they're dealing with, which is also very important. And the it seems like the old-fashioned way of just like going out and looking is not working because that's what the police are doing and they haven't found anything yet. I do want to point out that Mike's immediate trust in Eleven is honestly kind of naive, but that can be excused by the fact that he is going through something traumatic right now with his best friend going missing, and he's a kid, so it makes sense. From this moment moving forward, though, Mike has also a very strong loyalty to Eleven. Throughout the season, he does his best to try and protect her and do whatever it takes to keep her safe, and despite most logic, he trusts her pretty completely. This does bring us to one of the biggest dilemmas other than Will going missing this season, and that has to do with Lucas and Mike. From the beginning, Lucas never really seemed to trust Eleven, despite being shown that she has like special powers and recognized Will from the photo. He was always a lot more skeptical about her and her motivations. This all came to a head when Eleven led them astray while they were searching for the lab in order to try and protect them. I saw her wiping her nose on the tracks. She was using her powers. Full of the tub blood, right, Elf? Right, Elf? Well, what Eleven did was in a sense like Noble trying to protect them, this does feed directly into Lucas's suspicions of her, like she did exactly what he was thinking she was gonna do other than like her motivations for doing it. He saw finding the lab as the best way to try and find Will because he also cares about Will, so the fact that Eleven sabotaged this also fed into his suspicions of her. Mike and Lucas's fight definitely puts Mike in a difficult situation. He is now forced to choose between one of his best friends and also someone that he's gotten really close to, who is the, also the person that he believes has the best chance of finding his other best friend. In this scenario, he completely trusts Eleven, and her redirecting them isn't like confirming any suspicions for him. He understands what she was trying to do, so he's just very confused on why Lucas doesn't understand. Later, Dustin brings up the idea that Lucas may be jealous that Mike was spending so much time with Eleven. You should have shaken my hand. He's just jealous. What are you talking about? Sometimes your total obliviousness just blows my mind. He's your best friend, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's fine, I get it. I didn't get here until the fourth grade. He had the advantage of living next door, but none of that matters. What matters is that he is your best friend. And then this girl shows up and starts living in your basement, and all you ever want to do is pay attention to her. That's not true. Yes, it is. And you know it. And he knows it. But no one ever says anything until you both start punching and yelling at each other like goblins with intelligence scores of zero. Jealousy you can know? definitely paint a person in a negative light, which may be why Lucas is so against Mike trusting Elle in general. This whole moment leads to a giant fight between Lucas and Mike, causing the party to split up momentarily and to create a rift between them. Eventually, Mike and Lucas do end up reconciling, um, but this is really an important moment, not just for Mike's character, but for Lucas's as well. Mike also gets another moment to show his loyalty to Dustin this time. Upon being cornered by the middle school bullies at the top of the quarry, the same quarry where they found Will's body, um, Mike is faced with a very tough decision. One of the bullies has a knife to Dustin's neck and the other is telling Mike to jump off the quarry, otherwise they would severely hurt Dustin. Mike, with actually very little hesitation, starts walking towards the edge of the cliff and he walks off. Troy, how this is a good idea, man. Mike, don't! Take this off, this opens in five! Four! Three! He 
sacrifices himself in order to try and save Dustin. And I think that's such an important decision that he makes. Obviously, we know that Elle shows up and saves him and he doesn't die, but I think a lot of people forget about this moment. And I hate that they do because it's such an important character moment for Mike. I mean, this kid has such strong loyalty to his friends, and I feel like so many of these moments that showcase that are often very much forgotten by the fan base. Later on, we get to see the crux of Mike and Elle's relationship this season when they get to have their little talk at the school. I want to point out that Mike does really skirt around actually talking about his feelings here, inviting her to live with him and to go to the snowball with him but falters when she asks why they can't be brother and sister like he and Nancy are. <laughs> Instead of giving her like an actual answer, he just kisses her, still communicating his feelings to her, but not coming out and actually saying them. And this becomes a very common way that we see Mike express his feelings throughout the rest of the show. Now all of the party minus Will come face to face with the Demogorgon and all of the people from Hawkins' lab. In a final act of bravery, Elle chooses to sacrifice herself to kill the Demogorgon and save the rest of the party. And Mike has to sit and watch this. He has to sit and watch her sacrifice herself, the girl that he has started to fall for. In contrast to Mike's sacrifice for Dustin, Elle doesn't come right back. While we learn by the end of the episode that Elle's not really dead, Mike doesn't learn that for nearly another whole year. Having to watch this is absolutely traumatizing for Mike, and this definitely affects his behavior moving forward in other seasons. I think this doesn't get talked about as much because Elle didn't actually die, she does come back, and we know that she's coming back by the end of the episode. However, this was still something that was very real that Mike had to deal with, and he had to sit and, like, relive this moment for, like, a whole year before finding out that she was actually still alive. We know that the audience sort of pushes Mike's trauma surrounding this aside, but it also gets pushed aside by a lot of the people in the show itself. I won't talk about it too much here, I'll save that for season two, but I think one of the biggest issues involving Mike's trauma is the fact that he doesn't have anybody that he can talk to about it. He can't, like, a lot of the people that he would be able to traditionally talk about these things with, he can't tell about this because then he'd have to explain everything. And there's no way that he'd be able to explain the Upside Down and Elle and her powers and all of that to everybody. So he is just left to sit with his own feelings and deal with it that way, which is absolutely not a healthy way to cope with trauma. He's also a teenage boy, and this is the 80s, so I doubt that he is being encouraged to his openly express his feelings, so he is also most likely pushing down all of his pain and hurt and trauma. Speaking of trauma, he also had to deal with his best friend going missing and then having to watch as they seemingly pulled his dead body out of the water. Mike had to sit through his best friend's funeral. He had to deal with these seesaw of emotions that were going through his mind surrounding this situation, and that is not healthy. He had to go back and forth with believing that Will was still alive while the rest of the world was providing instance and evidence after instance and evidence that that wasn't true. At this moment, the only thing providing him some sense of reassurance that Will was still out there was Eleven, so that it makes complete sense why he clings to her. She is his only hope at finding Will in this moment, so yes, it makes sense that he grows such an immediate trust in her so quickly. There are so many traumatic moments that Mike has to deal with in this season, 
and these moments are so incredibly influential in shaping who he is as a character in the following seasons. It explains why he becomes so closed off and also explains why he is so protective of specifically Mike. Mike. <laughs> These explain why he becomes so closed off and so protective of Will and L. The relationship that I wanted to focus on for season one is Mike's friendships with Dustin and Lucas. Well, I know I've already highlighted a lot of the main points, I wanted to go over some of the smaller little details that I noticed when rewatching Mike's scenes with them. Firstly, I'm going to talk about Dustin and Mike. Dustin joined the party a lot later than the rest of the group, moving to Hawkins in fourth grade, whereas it appears that Mike, Will, and Lucas have been friends since kindergarten. During season one, Dustin serves as more of a middle ground between Mike and Lucas, being more accepting of Elle than Lucas was, but also more willing to call out Mike's bad behavior. The conversation that the two of them have on their bikes towards the end of the season, I think, is a good scene that really demonstrates the strength of their friendship. Dustin says that there is no way that he would be Mike's best friend because he's known Lucas and Will for longer, and Mike immediately shuts this down saying, no, all of you guys are my best friends, and Dustin's like, no, you can only have one best friend, and Mike's like, no, you guys are all my best friends, and there's nothing that can change that, and I just, I love this scene with them. Now everything's weird. He's not my best friend. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, he is, but so are you, and so is Will. Can't have more than one best friend. Says who? Says logic. Why well, call bull on your logic? Because you're my best friend too. Okay. Then, of course, we have the scene where Mike sacrifices himself for Dustin. Of course, if there wasn't a strong friendship there, Mike would not have sacrificed himself in the first place. I mean, you don't just go sacrificing yourself for anybody. Like, no, you don't do that. There had to have been the strong foundation for a friendship there, and this is one of my favorite moments to showcase that. Unfortunately, despite how strong their friendship is in season one, we really don't get to see a lot more of them in later seasons, as they're often split up from one another. Mike tends to be paired with like Will and Elle, and then sometimes Lucas and Max, whereas Dustin tends to get paired with Steve mostly, as well as the other older teens. It's hard to see how close they were in the first season to then see them barely interact in the following seasons. I'm just hoping that we get to see more of them in season 5 to reaffirm how close they actually are. Now, we also get a lot of Mike and Lucas's friendship in season 1. They do kind of serve as like opposing forces with Mike being the more open-minded and trusting person and Lucas being the more logical and skeptical person. Both characteristics are really important to have in the group, though, because having too much of one would cause an imbalance. If they were way more open-minded, they probably would have ended up getting themselves killed. However, if they were way too skeptical, they probably would never have found Will. Now, Mike and Lucas are next-door neighbors, and they have the easiest access to each other out of everybody in the party. I mean, this is why Dustin was so convinced that Mike would say Lucas was his best friend, because they live right next door to each other. Despite the little arguments that Mike and Lucas have during the whole season and the rest of the show, they always still come back and help each other whenever it is needed. They butt heads quite often, but this just kind of seems to be a staple in their friendship, which I think is honestly kind of good for both of them. As I said before, I think it's good that both of them balance each other out because I do think that they need to hear what the other has to say a lot of the times. They do have a unique friendship, but I think that's what makes their friendship stronger. As they say, opposites do attract, and Mike and Lucas's friendship really does seem to exemplify that. Once again in season two, the two of them find themselves butting heads when it comes to trying to include Max in the party. I'll get into more of Mike's rationale surrounding this later, but once again this serves as a moment of contrast between the two of them. By the time we get to season three, the two have gotten closer because both of them have gotten girlfriends for the first time. They do seem to go to each other for advice surrounding said girlfriends, and Lucas is right there to try and help Mike win Elle back after Hopper intervenes with their relationship. They 
do get to spend a lot more time together this season and it was nice to see them working so closely together. During season four there is also not a lot of Mike and Lucas um, due to Mike spending most of the season in California. Um, upon getting to high school the little trio of them, Mike, Dustin, and Lucas, have joined the Hellfire Club, which is a D&D &D club, and Lucas has also joined the basketball team. The basketball team has been doing well, and they are set to have their championship game on a Friday night. Unfortunately for them, Hellfire also meets on Friday nights, and Lucas asks his two friends to ask the leader of Hellfire, Eddie, to postpone the meeting, um, and have them come to their game instead, but this doesn't end up happening. They try, but instead of Hellfire getting postponed, they end up replacing Lucas with his own sister for the meeting and skipping his game. While I understand how important Hellfire is to Mike, skipping Lucas's game and then replacing him with his own sister definitely really creates a rift between the two that we do not see them resolve by the end of the season. Mike leaves for California before the two of them get a chance to talk, and by the time he gets back, it is clear that Lucas has a lot more things on his mind and is not worrying about the little fight they had before Mike left. While Lucas does seem to patch things up with Dustin, there is never really a chance for him to do the same with Mike, and it kind of leaves their friendship in a bittersweet spot by the end of season four. We do get to see them hug in the hospital room at the end of the season, but I think this is more just due to the heightened emotions surrounding everything, and I wouldn't take this as them resolving their issues. Um, I really hope that we get some sort of resolution to this and they get to talk in the next season and work out what has been causing them problems. I just, I hope that we get back to the way they were in season one. Season two Mike is a very stark contrast to season one Mike, but not like in a bad way, like a poor writing way. I think it's in a very realistic way. As I talked about before, Mike experienced a lot of trauma in season one and that definitely has affected the way he behaves in season two. While he is still close with the other members of the party, he has become very closed off to anyone else and this becomes most evident when we see the way that he interacts with Max. I'm going to talk about them later, but I think it's important to understand why Mike is behaving this way. As we previously established, Mike was very open and trusting in season one, taking Elle in when they found her in the woods, and believing that she is, has the best intentions and is the only way that they're going to find Will. He was so open with her, and then he had to watch her seemingly die. We see the toll that this has taken on Mike. He has resorted to calling Elle on the radio every single day for pretty much a year straight, hoping that there is just a sliver of a chance that she is still alive. As a result of this, when there is someone new who wants to join the party, Mike is very against this. He doesn't want to get attached to someone new, and he doesn't want to have to go through the pain of possibly losing someone like th that again in the same way that he lost Elle. So, he pushes Max away, despite her best efforts to try and prove herself useful. Now, one of the key elements of the season is Mike and Will's friendship. With Justin and Lucas spending more time with Max this season, Mike and Will find themselves paired together more. We see throughout the season that Mike is very attuned to Will's emotions and behaviors, commenting one day when Will has to leave early for the lab that he was quiet today. Someone fires back saying, well, he's always quiet, but Mike's like, no, he was especially quiet today. I don't know. He's quiet today. He's always quiet. On Halloween, Mike is the one to notice that Will has gone missing from the group and goes to find him. Instead of heading back to the group, they end up going to Mike's house because Mike can tell that something is bothering Will. This is where, for the first time, Will opens up to somebody about what's going on in his mind with the mind flare and the now memories. Is this all real? Or is it, like the doctors say, all in your head? I don't know. Just... Just please don't tell the others, okay? 
they won't understand. This is a really important moment for both of the characters. This is the biggest moment so far that has shown their friendship and how strong it is. During the previous season, we'd only ever seen people talk about them, and I think it's so important that we actually get to see them acting like friends, best friends, in the way that they've only been talked about. Will hasn't been able to open up to his mom, his brother, even like the doctors at the lab, but he chooses to open up to Mike. The crazy together moment is one of my favorites from the two of them, and it really makes me miss this version of them. I don't know, sometimes I feel like I'm going crazy. Me too. Hey, well, if we're both going crazy, then we'll go crazy together, right? Yeah. Crazy together. Throughout the rest of the season, Mike and Will are often paired together. Mike is there when Will takes all of the scientists to where they think Hopper has gone missing, and he is there when Will is in the lab suffering from the Mind Flayer's control and is losing his memories. I do understand that a lot of this is kind of circumstantial, and he was just there from that, in like that first moment, so he's there for the rest of it, but he could have easily left to go and find the other friends, tell them what's going on, but he chooses to stay with Will. Finally, there was one other big moment this season where the two of them get paired. Once everyone has figured out that Will is being mind-controlled, they have him inside of the buyer's shed and are bombarding him with positive memories to try and get information out of him without the mind flyer knowing. All of the kids are inside trying to figure out what Will is saying, except for Mike. Mike is right there talking about all of his like positive memories with Will. Um, he talks about how Will was the first friend that he made at school and how that was the best decision that he ever made. I saw you on the swings and, and you were alone too. You're just swinging by yourself. And I just walked up to you and I asked. I asked if you wanted to be my friend. And you said yes. You said yes. It was the best thing I've ever done. I think that this scene really shows how close the two of them are and how strong that their friendship is. I mean, from what I can tell, Lucas has been friends with Will for just about as long as Mike have. Have? I mean, from what I can tell, it seems like Lucas has been friends with Will for as long as Mike has, but they made the conscious decision to include only Mike with Will's family. They are best friends, and Mike seems to be doing everything that he can to remind Will of this. Season 2 was absolutely the peak of their friendship, and it hurts to know that it only seems to go downhill from here. Now, we need to talk about the moment that Elle comes back at the end of this season. My heart just broke for the two of them any time the other was mentioned around them. Like, Mike didn't know that Elle was still alive, and Elle was trapped knowing that Mike was hurting and that she couldn't do anything about it. Their reunion was something that I was waiting for throughout the entire season, and it definitely didn't disappoint. <laughs> completely unrelated note, watching back the scene with Elle and Max's first interaction is just so funny to me, knowing how they act and um, how close they get in later seasons. <laughs> I do want to start this out by saying that I understand what Hopper's intentions were, was not letting Mike know that Elle was still alive and not letting her talk to him. He obviously cares a lot about her and was just doing anything to keep her safe which includes keeping her isolated and keeping everyone else in the dark. That being said, there was absolutely no way that he didn't know how much pain Mike was going through. He told Elle that he had been checking up on him, and Elle constantly reminded him of the fact that Mike was calling her every single day. So, the fact that Hopper just let Mike suffer like that 
just for so long really just irritates me. Once again, I know that Hopper was just trying to keep her safe, but there had to have been a way that he could have at least explained the situation to him so Mike wasn't dealing with what he thought was the death of his friend and the girl that he had started to fall for. It was a cruel thing to put a literal child through, especially in the wake of him thinking that his best friend was like possibly dead. Mike Wheeler has gone through so much trauma as a child. So his reaction to the news that Elle was still alive was honestly pretty tame considering the situation. He deserved to have a much bigger reaction to the news and I would not have blamed him one bit. The next part of the season sees him teamed up with the other kids for the first time since like all of the fighting had started. Um, as well as being teamed up with Steve for the first time. There's not really anything I really want to talk about here other than the fact that being teamed up with them was probably pretty difficult for Mike. He has no idea what is going on with his best friend and has to be separated from him for the first time since this whole ordeal started, which has got to be really difficult. He also has to watch Elle leave again, not knowing if she's going to come back either. I mean, the last time they faced something like this, she seemingly died and... This monster is a lot worse than before. That's already a lot of stress put on him in an already extremely stressful situation. In the end, everything seems to work out. Will is saved and Elle manages to close the gate. The core group has survived to see another day and they finally get to enjoy a moment to themselves. A snowball has arrived, which is the same one that Mike had mentioned to Elle at the end of the last season. This moment seems to be the moment where everything just kind of seems whole for Mike. All of his friends are alive and safe and happy and he finally gets to have Elle back who is also safe and alive and everything that he could have wanted is here and he finally gets to fulfill his promise that he made to Elle at the end of the last season by taking her to the dance. For everybody, everything seems to be finished finally with the mind flayer, the upside down, the lab, just everything. At this moment, there really isn't anything else that Mike could ask for, and it seems like things could only go up from here. Mike and Max's friendship is one that I find really interesting because more often than not, they have a lot of the same motivations, just very different methods of going about them. Before I get into that though, I want to start from the beginning of their friendship. The party is originally introduced to Max through Mad Max, the screen name that she uses at the arcade that the rest of the party frequents. Through the next couple of episodes, Lucas and Dustin try to convince Mike to allow her to join the party, but to no avail. Eventually, they just start including her in things despite Mike's protests that they don't need anyone else in the party. The first big moment that we get with the two of them is when they stop to talk while they're searching for Dart. This is where it becomes very clear why Mike is so hesitant in letting Max join the party. The last time that someone new joined the party, Mike got close and then had to watch them seemingly die. He doesn't want to go through that again by allowing somebody else in. He has already been through enough hurt and pain at this point and he doesn't want to deal with the possibility of more. There's also part of him that still believes that Elle is, wasn't really dead and that she may come back at some point. He, if Max joined the party, it would seem like Elle had been replaced if she ever came back. This feeling is even corroborated when Elle sees the two of them talking and having this conversation, as well as the way that she treats Max when they first like officially meet. Here, Mike mentions that they don't need anybody else, that they're good with just the four of them and Elle, and that he doesn't think that Max would fit like into this picture that he has painted in his mind. Even though Max is like insistent that she'd fit in with the group, even coming up with her own role as the Zoomer as to not replace Elle's role as the mage. Throughout the rest of the season, he just seems rather irritated by her presence, but there aren't really any other notable scenes with the two of them. Mike gets paired up with Will, and Max gets paired up with Lucas and Dustin. We do get a lot more of them in season three. Max has officially joined the party. Things seem pretty civil between them, maybe even friendly but they do end up spending most of the season at odds with one another, especially when it comes to Elle. For most of the summer, Mike and Elle have been sneaking off, using Elle's curfew as an excuse to leave the group early. 
Well, this is very clearly frustrating for the rest of the party as they just want to spend time with their friends. Mike and Elle are also teenagers here who are in love and are trying to make up for all of the lost time from the previous year. After some interference from Hopper, Mike and Elle's relationship seems to be in some rocky waters. Mike turns to Lucas for help and Elle turns to Max. Well, I don't think that either of them are really in the best place with their relationship to be giving other people relationship advice. It eventually leads to Elle dumping Mike. Mike grows increasingly frustrated with Max because he believes that Max influenced Elle into breaking up with him. As I stated earlier, a lot of the fighting that happens between the two in this season relates to Elle. Their biggest fight occurs when it comes to the discussion of Elle trying to see into Billy's mind and learn about the Mind Flayer's plans. Previously, when they had encountered Billy, he clearly provided quite the match for Elle and left her really drained as a result. Mike was arguing on the side that Elle shouldn't do this because it's too dangerous for her. They had already seen how dangerous and powerful the Mind Flayer was now through Billy. Mike, as stated before, had also seen Elle go through dangerous situation after dangerous situation, and it even lost her once, so I'm sure the thought of going through that again was too much for him. He didn't want to deal with the trauma of losing Elle for a second time and most likely having it stick this time. He wanted to protect her because he loves her and didn't want to see her get hurt again. Max, on the other hand, is arguing that Elle is her own person and can make her own decisions and doesn't need Mike telling her what she can and can't do. She thinks that Elle is clearly smart enough and capable enough to decide what she can do and how far to push her powers. Hey, can you guys settle an argument for us? Who do you think should decide Elle's limits? Mike or Eleven? The way that you frame that is such bullshit. It's not bullshit, Mike. This is your whole problem. And it's also precisely the reason why she dumped your ass. The fact is, she's not yours. She's her own person, fully capable of making her own decisions. She's risking her life for no reason. For no reason, Mike. The flater out there doing God knows what. Killing, flaying, transforming into monsters. And Elle's not stupid. She knows her abilities better than any of us. Exactly, thank you. And I think that this scene really just shows how much the two of them care for Elle and how important she is to both of them. They both want what they think is best for her, they just have very different ideas of what that is. This goes back to the first thing that I said in this section, that Mike and Max have very similar goals, just very different methods of going about and achieving them. I think that the biggest thing that would help their friendship is just to have better communication. I think they're able to talk in a way that wasn't like a screaming match and the two would be a lot closer than they already are and they'd be able to see how similar they are and realize that they really do want the same things deep down. They do seem to push their issues aside in the face of immediate danger though, both working together to help keep Elle safe from Billy and the Mind Flare. Unfortunately, there really isn't much more I can say about the two of them when it comes to season four. There really aren't any interactions between the two, with Max having isolated herself from the group following Billy's death and Mike leaving for California in episode two. I think that there's really a strong foundation for their friendship that they have built up, but this is one that I am a lot more doubtful about having an actual resolution. I think that both of them have a lot more pressing issues <laughs> going on, Max especially, <laughs> going into season five. Um, so I don't think there will be any sort of reconciliation between the two of them. It hurts because I really want them to have a good friendship, but it just seemed like this friendship was never really a priority for the writers, and I doubt that will change in season five. Season three definitely seems to be the season where Mike becomes a lot more divisive for a lot of people watching the show. After spending pretty much most of the previous season apart. This is the first time in a while that we get to see Mike and Elle spending significant time together. We see how close that they've gotten with the two of them always touching each other in some sort of way in every scene that they're in, usually holding hands or at least being very, very close to one another. <laughs> one of the first scenes of season three sees Dustin coming home after spending a month at summer camp and the rest of the party is there at his house to welcome him back. Not long after, though, Mike and Elle have to leave, citing Elle's curfew as an excuse. According to Max, this has been going on for pretty much the whole summer, and it's becoming very frustrating for the rest of the party as they just want to spend time with their friends. I can see why this is frustrating. 
obviously, but I can also, again, see where Mike and Elle are coming from. We see the two of them at Hopper's cabin quite a few times this season, and I think that these were the scenes that made me really start to realize that there was a change in Mike's character. Any of the times that Hopper tried to talk to them, Mike was honestly acting like a brat. I mean, would it have really hurt him to just hear Hopper out? No. And it probably would have avoided the mess that he and Elle get into later where she breaks up with him. However, Mike and Elle are both teenagers. They are at the prime age where they don't like listening to adults, especially their parents. And this is especially true if said adult is telling them to stop doing something that they clearly enjoy doing, which is exactly what it seems like Hopper is trying to do in these scenes from their perspective. Obviously, we as the audience get a lot more context as to what Hopper wants as we see his conversation with Joyce, but Mike doesn't have that context. He just sees Hopper as being an extremely overprotective dad. I mean, I remember being that age and not really wanting to listen to what adults were telling me. I would just kind of like smile and nod and just know that I really wasn't going to do what they were telling me to, and once they left, I was most likely going to go back to what I was doing in the first place. So, as bratty as Mike is being in these scenes, I can honestly understand why he is acting this way, and it just kind of feels like a natural step in him being a teenager. <laughs> now, with Hopper's intervention, Mike is left with quite the dilemma. He obviously wants to explain what is happening to Elle, but honestly, Hopper was pretty terrifying in that scene, so he opts to not do that and just turn to Lucas for dating advice. So I struggle with this plotline for a number of reasons. Firstly, I hate the way that Hopper went about this. I know this video isn't about him, but I do think it's really important to talk about. Rather than just explain how he was feeling, which I know is hard for him and Mike was definitely not making it any easier, he chooses to instead lie and then threaten a literal child. In the end, this not only ended up hurting Mike, it also hurt Eleven, which was definitely something Hopper wouldn't want to do. And because of the end of the season, we know how well worded what Hopper was planning to say to the two of them were, and I think if he had just been able to go through and say what he was planning to say, it would have gone a long way with both of them. Secondly, had Hopper not intervened, I don't think Mike and Elle would have ever broken up and I don't think that, their, think that their relationship would have ever come to the same conclusion that it did. I do think that there needs to be some changes in the way that they were going about their relationship. I think that Max had a lot of good points in the later season, but I definitely don't think that it would have spiraled as quickly as it did had Hopper not intervened. I do think that was the point though, <laughs> to be honest. It annoys me, but I do think that was the point. <laughs> Three, Mike going to Lucas for dating advice makes a lot of sense because he's the only one in the party that he knows for sure has a girlfriend and has been able to win her back. On the other hand, I absolutely hate the advice that Lucas gives him and I think that there are so many other ways, and so many better ways that Mike could have gone about this. We all know that clear communication is key to having a healthy relationship, and we know that that is especially important for Elle. Going behind her back and lying to her was not the move, and it doesn't shock me that in this scenario, Elle broke up with Mike. Overall, I do think that the way that Mike was acting during these scenes was pretty realistic for a typical teenage boy. The end result of this really doesn't shock me, and I think it could have been avoidable if it wasn't for all of the outside intervention from other characters. I don't think that Mike should be seen as the complete bad guy here, because during the scenes, it felt like he was acting pretty natural, and his responses seemed rather realistic. The guy has never had a girlfriend before, and is just trying to figure everything out. During all of this girl drama, we can see that Mike seems to be at odds with Will. I mean, most of the party seems to be, but it seems specifically clear with Mike and Will, and there is quite the drastic contrast to the way the two of them behaved in the previous season. With Dustin being gone for most of the summer, and Will not being close with Max or Elle, Will is left to try and hang out with Mike and Lucas. However, things don't seem to be going very well because the two of them seem to either always be with their girlfriends or talking about their girlfriends every time Will tries to hang out with them. 
I've seen a lot of people say that Will was really annoying during season three for constantly asking to play D&D and then forcing Mike and Lucas to do a campaign with him. And I don't really want to get too much into it here. I'll save that for Will's own analysis. However, I do want to say that Will is also a deeply traumatized kid. He was kidnapped and forced to spend most of his, like, the following year in and out of lab appointments and has lost a lot of his childhood as a result of that. Now, I don't think that because of what Will went through that Mike should just drop everything that he wants to do to do what Will wants. Mike is still his own person and is allowed to do things that don't include or interest Will. However, the way it seems like Mike has been treating him for like the entire summer is just plain rude. He doesn't seem to notice how much he and the others have been excluding Will and ignoring him, just shutting down anything that Will suggests. We do get a glimpse of the Mike and Will that we are used to in the very first scene of the season where the party is at the movies. Mike can tell us something is bothering Will and asks him about it, but this is literally the only thing that reminds us that these two are supposed to be best friends. The only reason that Mike seems to figure out that the way they've been treating Will is bothering him is because Will literally blew up at him and Lucas and had to spell everything out for him. I think that the fight that Will and Mike have in Mike's garage is definitely the scene where pretty much everyone's opinion on Mike changed. I think this is a really difficult situation because on the one hand, it's pretty clear that Mike has had a lot on his mind the past few days with him and Elle, and he just got broken up with, so I completely understand why he's not super enthusiastic about being forced into a game of D&D at the crack of dawn, <laughs> or whenever, like, being woken up by it. Um... Um, on the other hand, it's pretty clear that everyone, including Mike, have been a pretty shitty friend to Will the entire summer. Like, it's awesome that both Mike and Lucas have girlfriends, like, good for them, but that doesn't give them the right to just completely abandon their other friends like they cl so clearly have done with Will and even Dustin. One of the moments that people seem to fixate from this fight, especially more recently, is when Mike says, it's not my fault you don't like girls. Girl. Elle's not stupid. It's not my fault you don't like girls. Now, after certain revelations from season four, this line seems to hold a lot more weight than it did when it first aired. However, I don't think that Mike meant this in a homophobic sense whatsoever. I think that what Mike was trying to say was that it's not his fault that he has a girlfriend and that he likes spending time with her and that Will doesn't have one and hasn't shown any interest in anyone in the same way that Mike and Lucas have. It obviously wasn't the best thing to say and was really rude, but I don't think that he was being like homophobic here in the same way that I've seen people suggest. Another big point from their fight relates to... Another big point from their fight talks about them growing up and moving on from constantly playing D&D in Mike's basement. But we're not kids anymore. I mean, what did you think, really? That we were never gonna get girlfriends? That we are just gonna sit in my basement all day and play games for the rest of our lives? Yeah. Yes, I, I did. I talked about it earlier, but Will has lost a lot of his childhood, and it seems like he is clinging on to those good parts of his childhood as possibly a way to block out the bad parts. He clings on to those nights playing D&D because they are the happiest moments of his childhood, and he just wants to bring that feeling of happiness back. Mike, on the other hand, has not lost as much of his childhood as Will has. Sure, he has been through way more traumatic things than anybody should have to deal with, but he still got to have a relatively normal childhood in between all of these big events. To him, it feels like the party has reached like its natural phase where they stop doing some of the things that they used to. Not playing as much D&D makes sense for Mike in the same way that it doesn't make sense for Will. Unfortunately, there just seems to be a misunderstanding between both of them on where the other is at in their lives. I think that there is a little bit of understanding on Will's side, as he just usually seems to take a step back and just kind of let everything happen rather than intervening. However, it was pretty naive to assume that everything was just gonna like stay the same forever. Of course everyone is gonna get older eventually and interests are going to change. Unfortunately, that's just the way things are. That's how they just go. I don't want to seem like I'm putting all the blame on Will because I'm not, but I do feel like there's a lot of people out there that treat him as a character who can do no wrong, which is absolutely not true. 
Mike is also at fault here, though. He was very neglectful to his friend and what the others around him wanted to do, often just opting for what he, and by extension L, wanted to do all summer. Despite hearing from Will several times that he just wants to play D&D, he ignores him and just brushes his request aside. During season three, Mike is just being a really bad friend to Will. I think the hardest thing about this scene for me was the fact that it really just shows that Mike and Will seem to be at different places in their lives and these places are just not aligning with one another. The harsh reality is that this happens to even the best of friends. Despite being extremely close as little kids, as they grow older, they eventually drift apart, often citing differing interests and different motivations as the reason. That doesn't mean that they can't find each other again later on, which is what I'm hoping will happen with Mike and Will. This does tend to happen rather gradually though, so the stark contrast between them in season two and three is what might seem a little bit unrealistic about this. However, there is eight months between season two and three, so the chance may have been gradual, we just didn't see it. I know I've been talking about this scene a lot, but as I said before, this is definitely the scene I think of when I think of Mike acting different in season three. He is absolutely at fault for some of the things that have happened, but he's not the only one at fault. I think that Mike definitely gets a bad rep, and he might be because he is on the opposing side of a lot of people's favorite character. Um, I do think I'm getting a little too analytical here, so um, just, let's move on to the rest of the season. Despite the big fight that the two of them had, Mike and Lucas follow Will back to his house to make sure that he's alright, and end up seeing him destroying Castle Byers. Unfortunately, there really isn't any time for them to talk, though, as Will then reveals that the Mind Flayer is back somehow. Later on, the party come up with a plan to trap Billy, who they have now figured out is the new host for the Mind Flayer. While it seems like Billy is overpowering Elle, Mike is the one to save her by smashing a barbell over Billy's head. He is also the one to comfort her after she throws Billy outside of the sauna and collapses from overusing her powers. After a revelation from Nancy about the Mind Flayer and his plans, the party finds themselves at the hospital. And this is where Mike finally gets a small chance to try and talk to Elle um, after giving her <laughs> some M&Ms. Um, it seems like things between the two of them are sort of looking up. This does come after Mike was pretty much shoved into it by Lucas, though. <laughs> The group then regroups at Hopper's cabin, and while Elle is trying to find some of the flayed, Mike is very openly expressing his concern to the others. He's very clearly worried about what doing this might do to Elle, and is worried that she is pushing herself too far with her powers. The Mind Flayer is clearly stronger than ever, and he's worried that by looking for the flayed, Elle might get hurt and it might lead the Mind Flayer directly to them. This is where the biggest fight between Mike and Max happens. Mike, as I said earlier, is very worried about Elle pushing herself too far here. Max, as well as the other people in the group, are on the side that Elle knows what she's doing and knows her limits, and that what she's doing is the only way that they are going to find the Flayed and the Mind Flayer. It seems like everybody is on Max's side on this issue, but then Mike brings up the fact that L and Max spied on the boys at some point, which is true. This seems to shift Lucas's opinion on the matter, and Mike uses this as an argument that Max is careless with L's powers. The whole fight ends with Mike confessing that he loves L and that he can't lose her again. I'm just trying to demonstrate how careless Max is with Eleven's powers. In fact, how careless all of you are. You're treating her like some kind of machine when she's not a machine, and I don't want her to die looking for the flight when they've obviously vanished off the face of the earth. So can we please just come up with a new plan because I love her and I can't lose her again? I think that while we all know that Elle is very capable of understanding her limits, it is important to at least try to understand where Mike is coming from. I'm not saying we have to agree with him, but I do think it's important to try and understand why he is thinking this way. I have talked a lot about the trauma that Mike had to endure following Elle dying at the end of season one. That was such a hard moment for Mike, and this was when she only was faced with one Demogorgon. Obviously, she's a lot stronger with her powers now, but this is also a much stronger foe, and they've already seen how powerful just Billy was. There is no telling how powerful the Mind Flayer would be, especially if he continued to create more Flayed as it was doing in the moment. I'm not saying that Mike is completely right in this situation, however, it's not hard to understand where he's coming from and why he says what he does. 
This is also one of the few moments where Mike is very clear and open with expressing his feelings, just coming out and saying that he loves Elle. I'm not going to get into that here, though. I'll talk about it later. Overall, I just don't think that Mike is as bad of a guy in this scene as he seems to be painted. I think that the biggest thing that we can draw from this whole dilemma is that Mike really does care about Elle. He goes about it more so through his actions rather than just coming out and saying it. He may not have the best way of expressing it, and there are times where it definitely does come across as more controlling rather than caring, but deep down, he just wants to keep her safe and wants to make sure that he doesn't lose her again in the same way as before. After the Mind Flayer attacks the group at Hopper's cabin, they end up at a convenience store to regroup and come up with a plan. Here, Mike finally gets a chance to talk to Elle, and I mean like really talk to her. He tries to explain how he's been feeling for the past few days, how much the breakup hurt him, and also shares that he's glad that she and Max are friends now. He tells her that despite that, seeing her hang out with somebody else really made him jealous and that he just kind of wanted her all to himself. He acknowledges that that's really selfish of him, but he's new to all this and is just trying to figure it all out because he's never felt this way about anyone before. However, he does skirt around saying the word love, heavily implying it, but Elle just isn't able to understand what he's trying to say. I just like, I've never felt like this, you know, with anyone before. And, you know, they do say it makes you crazy. What makes you crazy? You never, you never heard that term. You know, like the phrase, like, blank, makes you crazy, like the word. Girlfriends? No, 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 not, not girlfriends. Boyfriends. No, 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 not boyfriends either. It's like, it's like a feeling or, yeah, like something, like, like an, old people say it to each other sometimes. Old it's, people? Yeah, what I, want to say is that I just, I know that I... Before he can actually explain it though, Dustin radios in saying that it's a code red. Despite his previous outburst earlier, this is like the most emotional vulnerability that we've ever really gotten from Mike. It's pretty clear that he's rather closed off with his emotions, choosing to showcase them through actions rather than words, so it's a nice change of pace to see him actually vocalize what he is thinking, rather than just expecting the others around him to understand. In terms of what he actually says here, I think it checks out. Jealousy is pretty common in relationships, especially new ones, and if something changes up what you're used to with it. Max and Elle becoming friends was definitely not something Mike was used to, and it kind of threw a wrench into his, like, typical routine with Elle, causing him to behave differently than he normally would. Also, I'd like to bring up once again that Mike is a teenager. He is not going to do everything perfectly because that's what teenagers do. There are going to be mistakes, and he isn't going to say everything right the first time or even the second time. This is the time for learning how all of this relationship stuff works. There is a little thing that I want to note here. Once everyone reunites and they're about to split up again, Hopper tells Mike to be careful and I just, I love it. I think that Hopper is finally able to see how much Mike actually cares about Elle in that he might not be as bad as he thought, which is a nice change. It's a nice change to see. <laughs> Unfortunately, there really isn't anything to note during the battle against the Mind Flayer, other than there's definitely been a shift in Mike and Max's dynamic. Now, three months later, everyone is helping the buyers pack up their stuff to move. After Will puts all of his D&D books in the donation box, Mike questions him, asking, well, what if you want to join another party when you move? Will just denies this, saying that he would never do that. I think that this still speaks to how strong their friendship is, despite how rough of a summer the two of them had. I know things go a little differently in season four, but I don't want to talk about that. That's not what I'm here to talk about right now. I'm here to talk about season three. Here, in this moment, we finally get a glimpse at the Mike and Will that we are used to and the best friends that they should be. Mike and Elle also get a chance to talk before they all leave. Mike mentions that he's going to steal Cerebro, which is Dustin's, like, radio tower from him and call Elle all the time. He also talks to her about all of the holiday plans and like who's going where to visit. Um, Elle then brings up Mike's argument that he had with Max at the cabin, saying that she heard all of it. Mike tries to like play this off, saying that he really doesn't remember it. And then Elle says that he, she loves him too and then just walks away. <laughs> Now, I was really stuck on what friendship I should talk about at the end of season three, and I kept going back and forth between Will and Elle. 
Well, it makes more sense to talk about Elle at the end of season three. There's still so much going on with both of their friendships in season four, and it felt like it would just kind of ruin it if I talked about it now. So, I'm going to talk about both of them after season four, as that makes a lot more sense to me, and it kind of follows along with the show better, as both of them really play an important role in Mike's character in season four. <laughs> If season three started the divide on opinions about Mike, season four absolutely seemed to confirm them. There was absolutely something about Mike this season that was very different from the Mike that we had grown used to, so let's break down why that was. Now, having started his freshman year at Hawkins High, he, Dustin, and Lucas have joined the Hellfire Club, which is a D&D club run by senior Eddie Munson. Lucas has also joined the basketball team, and the team has made it to the championship. Unfortunately, the championship game happens to fall on the same night as the conclusion to Eddie's semester-long campaign. Mike and Dustin try to get to Lucas to talk to his coach to move the game, or for him to just skip the game and go to Hellfire because he's been on the bench the entire season, so it's not like they would really miss him anyway. On the other hand, Lucas asked the others to talk to Eddie to try and postpone Hellfire, um, Lucas then confesses that the game is really important to him because he is sick of being bullied and laughed at and just wants a chance at having a normal high school experience, and basketball is his ticket to that. He pleads with his friends to talk to Eddie to, and then try and come to his game for him. When they talk to Eddie, he refuses, saying that they need to find a sub for Lucas instead. After multiple failed attempts, they end up recruiting Lucas's own sister, Erica, to replace him. They end up skipping the championship game and going to Hellfire, which creates quite the rift between them and Lucas. Unfortunately, Mike and Lucas do not get a chance for reconciliation as Mike leaves for California the next morning. He shows up wearing the worst outfit I have ever seen. Like, I have no idea if it's iconic or just, like, plain awful, but it is certainly something. Mike! Uh. Once he arrives, he immediately embraces Elle, kissing her. Will goes in for a hug as well, but Mike, like, awkwardly opts for a handshake instead. It was, it was weird. It was awkward. As they leave the airport, Elle explains the entire day she has planned out for the two of them, and as the audience knows, she is lying about some of, well, most of the details. Um, things are very clearly awkward between Mike and Will here, most likely due to the distance not doing any favors for their friendship. The trio then makes their way to the roller rink, where Mike and Elle are all over each other, leaving Will as the ultimate third wheel. Unfortunately, things go very wrong very quickly when Angela, originally presented to Mike as Elle's friend, shows up, traps Elle, and throws a milkshake on her, humiliating her in front of the entire roller rink. This is where Will tells Mike that Elle has been lying to him about everything and that she's been having a ton of problems at school. While Will and Mike are trying to find Elle, they end up having a fight Mike is angry at Will for not telling him about Elle lying to him sooner because they probably could have stopped what happened. He accuses Will of sabotaging the day as well by like moping and rolling his eyes the entire time. Will then says that he was really frustrated that Elle was lying to him and he felt like a total third wheel the entire day so he shouldn't blame him for not being happy the entire time. Will then asks about like the two of them, like what happened to them? He says that Mike only called a couple of times while Elle has a whole book of letters from him. Mike then retorts by saying, why is it all on me? And that maybe Will should have reached out more. This is where it really seems like their friendship is slipping. There's a couple things I want to bring up relating to this. Firstly, I want to say that I see both of their sides here and that I don't think that either of them are completely right or completely wrong. It's obviously very frustrating for Will to only have his best friend reach out a couple of times when his adoptive sister gets like weekly letters from him. However, it shouldn't completely be on Mike to be the one reaching out. Mike even says this, that Will should have reached out more. Another thing that I want to bring up is that Mike did try to call. Um, Dustin says at some point later on during the season that Mike had been complaining all year that he couldn't get through to the buyer's phone because of Joyce's new job. Same shit. 
How is that possible? I told you, Joyce has to just tell him her her job. She's always on the phone. Mike won't stop whining about it. Okay, yeah. Realistically, Mike was not trying to call L because if he did, that would most likely reveal her relocation to the government, which is not good. And it's not like he was probably trying to call Joyce or Jonathan, so he was most likely trying to call Will. Something that I've seen a lot of people mentioning is that if Mike was writing letters to L and if he wasn't able to call Will, why wouldn't he write Will letters? Uh, my best guess for that is probably that he felt as though writing letters was more of like a romantic thing that he wanted to like reserve specifically for L, and probably didn't quite feel comfortable doing the same thing with his best friend. I definitely think that there were lots of things that both of them could have done to communicate better and reach out more and try and maintain their friendship during this time apart. However, I do think that there were things that were working against them and stopped them from communicating in the way that either of them would have wanted to. Eventually, they do find Elle after she smashes a roller skate into Angela's face. Mike runs up to her asking, what did you do? What have you done? And just seems very distressed. I've seen a lot of people talk about this scene as well, mostly relating to Mike's reaction here. People bring up the fact that he doesn't really seem to have a reaction any of the times that Elle has, like, killed people, but when she smacks someone in the face with a roller skate, he's freaking out. I think a lot of people just have a problem with the stark difference between the two different scenarios. I think the reason that I don't have an issue with this is just through the different context of the different scenarios. During any of the times that Elle has killed people, it's been life or death situations. Each time, someone in the group has been, like, has feared for their lives, and in those situations, the only way out is for Elle to use her powers and kill the people or things that are threatening them. However, during the Angela situation, it was not a life or death scenario. Mike went to the roller rink thinking that he was going to have a fun day with his girlfriend and his friend. And up until 15, 20 minutes ago, he was under the impression that Elle's life was great there and that she had a lot of friends and was having a great time. So he was also dealing with a lot of emotions surrounding the fact that she had been lying to him all day. He was not expecting her to retaliate in the way that she did, so of course he reacted in the way that he did. I think another reason that people have such a negative reaction to the scene is that while Mike is saying what he's saying, it is overlaid by Dr. Brenner saying the exact same thing. This moment obviously is trying to draw a parallel between the two scenes and definitely makes us have a negative reaction to Mike. We all know that Brenner is a bad guy and I highly doubt that anyone's going to dispute that. So this scene definitely does seem to paint Mike in a negative light. I don't think that Mike's reaction was out of pocket here. Um, and I think that the negative reaction to this scene mostly just comes from people wanting to make Mike seem like a terrible person in any way that they possibly can. <laughs> The next morning, Mike finally gets a chance to talk to Elle about what had happened the night before. He's still very confused and hurt by the fact that he was lied to, but Elle is also hurt by his reaction to the whole situation. Well, I've already said in my opinion on his reaction, he explains that he's not scared of her. The whole thing just shocked and confused him. This conversation ends up leading to what I think the biggest problem with their relationship as it currently stands is. Mike talks about how much he cares about her, but Elvin brings up the idea that he doesn't love her, though. She shows him every letter saying that it's always signed from Mike and not love Mike. I, I care for you so much. Care. But you don't, you don't love me anymore? Who, who said that I didn't? You never say it. I say it. You can't even write it, Mike. From Mike. From Mike. From Mike. From Mike. From. Okay, 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 okay. I want to take this moment to talk about love languages. Love languages are defined by author Gary Chapman as the way in which we receive love from others. He says that there are five types of love languages. First, we have words of affirmation, which is saying supportive things to your partner. Second, we have acts of service, which is doing helpful things for your partner. Three is receiving gifts, which is giving your partner gifts to tell them that you were thinking about them. Four is quality time, spending meaningful time with your partner. 
five is physical touch, being close to and caressed by your partner. The two that I want to highlight here are words of affirmation and acts of service, as I believe they relate best to Mike and Elle. For Elle, she is someone that needs direct communication when it comes to things and is still learning to understand the subtleties of life due to her upbringing. She needs to hear directly from others how they feel about her, and she needs to hear directly from Mike that he loves her in order for her to believe it. Mike, on the other hand, is more of an acts of service person. He often shows his love for people by doing things for them, opting to help them rather than just coming out and saying how he feels. He clearly has a difficult time talking about his feelings, which is shown by him only being able to do so in stressful outbursts, such as the scene in Hopper's cabin during the previous season. But is there a reason for this? It is pretty clear to me that the reason that Mike has a difficult time expressing his emotions is due to his home life. From the beginning of the show, it is quite clear that Mike's parents, Karen and Ted Wheeler, do not really have the happiest of marriages. They are often arguing and we never really see the two of them expressing any sort of love for one another. Nancy mentions at one point that the two of them got together really young because Ted was successful and it would give Karen the life that she wanted. She also says that she's not sure if Karen ever really loved Ted. I don't think my parents ever loved each other. You must have married for some reason. My mom was young. My dad was older, but he had a cushy job. Money came from a good family. So they bought a nice house at the end of the cul-de-sac, started their nuclear family. Screw that. Screw that. Now, this really isn't the best environment for either of their kids to grow up in, not having a good example of a healthy, what a healthy relationship looks like to base their own off of. There is a good chance that Mike just assumed that this is how relationships are supposed to be and that he never really saw saying I love you as being normal. Also, as far as I know, there aren't really any other adults in his life that have healthy relationships that he can look up to other than maybe like Lucas's parents, but we don't know anything about them. In the end, it just doesn't seem like their two types of love are that compatible with one another, and they're both at an age where that's most likely not going to change. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it just seems like they're at a place where a relationship is not the best idea. I'm not saying that they don't love each other and don't care about each other, and I'm sure that they would probably work out better later on after they've both matured, but it just doesn't seem like the best idea for them to be in a relationship right now. Elle is later taken away by cops after the roller rink incident and is then later taken by another faction of the government that is working with Dr. Owens. Mike is very distraught trying to understand what's going on with Elle and now also trying to figure out what is going on in Hawkins. After two agents have been assigned to keep Mike, Will, and Jonathan safe in the house, Mike and Will get a chance to talk. Will is very concerned about Hawkins wanting to know what is going on and believing that there's no way that they can keep Hawkins safe without Elle. Mike is still thinking about Elle and confesses to Will that he and Elle fought before she was taken away. He says that he wishes that he could have said something to her and that maybe if he did, she would actually want him there with her. Will reassures him that everything is fine and that Elle can handle herself, but once again stresses his concern uh, for everyone in Hawkins. Mike asks then if he doesn't trust Owens, and Will says it's not that, it's just the fact that Owens couldn't save him. It was Mike and his friends that were able to save Will. It's a nice moment between the two, especially when Mike says that it's going to be up to them to save the day again. I mean, this is what I missed when it came to Mike and Will. This is a lot more along the lines of the best friends that we have come to get used to. Mike also gets a chance to apologize to Will for how he's been treating him for the last few days, as well as just for the past year. He says that everything has felt so weird for like the past year and that he's just been so worried about Elle that he feels like he lost Will. He wants them to be able to work together again like they used to as best friends. And the two seem to make up here even if there are some things that they definitely need to talk about. I'm really happy that the two are finally get a chance to like really talk. I just, I really missed them and I'm glad that they're finally moving forward here. Jonathan then comes up with a plan for them to make their escape and get to Hawkins and L. and the plan is to get Argyle to come and pick them up by ordering a pizza. <laughs> 
Um, it doesn't go according to plan, though, because before Argyle can show up, the other faction of the government that is working against Owens shows up and starts shooting at them, seemingly killing one of the agents and shooting the other one. They get him out as Argyle shows up, and they drive off. Unfortunately, the agent dies. <laughs> I can't say it without laughing. Fortunately, the agent dies. <laughs> Unfortunately, the agent dies. <laughs> Can I change it? Unfortunately, the agent passes away. Okay, that one's better. <laughs> nope. Alright. Unfortunately, the agent dies and they end up burying him in a pantheon car dump. I'm sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately, the agent doesn't make it and after burying him in an abandoned car dump, Mike and Will once again get a chance to talk. They do a lot of talking in this season. Mike is still worrying about the same issues as before and just wishes that he could have told Elle how he felt. Will then says how scary it can be to tell someone how you really feel because what if they don't like the truth? We all know what he's implying here, but this does seem to do the trick in cheering Mike up. They then find what they think is the phone number for the agent lady in the dead agent's pen. Um, they find the payphone, but after calling the number, they figure out that it's not a phone number, it's actually a computer. And so they come up with a plan to go and find Susie, Dustin's girlfriend, to help them figure out what is going on. When they get to Susie's house, she agrees to help them under the guise that this is to help win a competition to win a video game console for Dustin's birthday. They stage a plan to get to the only computer in the house and she is able to get them the coordinates for the computer. On the ride to the coordinates, Mike opens up that he's really worried for Elle, but is also worried that she's soon gonna realize that she doesn't need him anymore. He says that it was all just some dumb luck that he was the one that found her in the woods that day and that he isn't special. Will then says that it seems like Mike's just really scared of losing her, and this just seems to hit the nail right on the head. We've talked a lot about the trauma that Mike has dealt with when it comes to losing Elle, so of course the thought of losing her again is fresh on his mind. Now we have to talk about the confession scene in the van. We all know exactly what Will was trying to say here, and that he was just substituting his own feelings for Mike with Elle's. However, this is in a video about Will, so I want to focus on Mike's reaction to this. Firstly, how in the world did this dude not see or hear his best friend crying right next to him? I just don't understand that. Anyways, I don't blame him for not picking up on what Will was trying to say here. Mike clearly has a lot on his mind right now and is dealing with a lot of emotions at that moment, and here Will is saying exactly what Mike needed to hear. So, of course, he's going to be focusing on that, not picking up on the subtleties of what Will was trying to imply. The moment where everybody finds Elle and they reunite is a really sweet moment. I just really wish that Mike would have asked if she was okay here. I mean, he literally watched her just take down a helicopter that was shooting at her and is surrounded by dead bodies. I'm glad that Will at least asked, like somebody <laughs> at least asked here, but I was kind of expecting Mike to because he was the one that was so worried about her. In the season finale, Mike and Elle finally get a chance to talk before her fight with Vecna in Max's mind. They both mention how much they missed one another, and it seems like Mike is finally going to get a chance to apologize for their fight earlier and maybe even, like, confess his feelings. He's getting close to it, um, but ends up getting interrupted by Argyle. It honestly seems like every single time Mike is getting close to being able to talk about his feelings openly, there is something that stops him from doing so. Now we get to Mike's monologue while Elle is fighting Vecna. Once again, Will is the one that comes up with the best ideas and is the one that convinces Mike that he has to be the one that can save her. For the most part, I really don't have an issue with the monologue itself. I think that a lot of it was just Mike saying what he thought Elle needed to hear in that moment um, to help her fight. This is just another example of Mike only being able to talk about his emotions in here at the moment, stressful emotional situations. Um, but he once again confesses that he does love her, that he's always loved her. He tells her that he can't lose her, which is something I don't think he's ever said directly to her, even if everyone knows it and he's said it to pretty much everyone else. 
Finally, he reminds her of just how powerful and special she is and that she can do anything and that she just needs to fight. As sweet as this whole monologue is, there's one thing that Mike says here that kind of sours the whole moment for me. It is when he says that his life started the day that he found Elle in the woods. But the truth is, Elle, I don't know how to live without you. I feel like my life started that day we found you in the woods. Well, I do think that an important part of his life started that day. May I remind you that this is also the same day that he found out that his best friend was missing? They were literally out in the woods looking for him when they found L. Also, the fact that he says this in front of Will, too, just wow. I understand what Mike is trying to say here, I just think that there are a million other ways that they could have had him say this that would have conveyed the same message without undermining Will's character and Mike's friendship with him. In the end, I do think this is a very emotionally vulnerable moment for Mike, and hopefully by saying this it will allow him to be more comfortable in expressing his emotions and just himself moving forward into season 5. Finally, the whole crew makes it back to Hawkins. I don't have much to say about the reunion scene, only that I wish that we would have seen Dustin telling Mike about Eddie. I know that none of the others were super close to him at all, but it seemed like Mike looked up to him and would have considered him a friend. I think it could have been a good bonding moment between Mike and Dustin, and I just I really wish that they would have acknowledged Eddie a little more, like with his death outside of Dustin telling his uncle. I want to end this part by saying I am so glad that we got a reunion scene with Hopper and Mike. They certainly had their differences last season, so being able to see them reunite at the end of this season was a nice treat, and I just thought the whole thing was really sweet. I'll admit I was having a really hard time writing this section because I feel like I've already hit on everything I really wanted to talk about when it comes to Mike's friendship with both Will and Elle. I really didn't want to seem like I was just repeating everything that I'd already said throughout the whole video because... Mike's relationship to these two are basically what drive his whole character throughout the entire show. I couldn't just like skirt around those moments in the same way that I could do for Lucas, Dustin, and Max. So I thought that I would just take the time to talk about why each of these friendships are so important to Mike rather than just retelling their whole stories like I did before. For Mike and Will, they were each other's first friends, their first best friends. They've basically spent their entire lives together and it shows. Mike is clearly very attuned to Will's actions, picking up even the subtlest of changes in the way that he behaves. They care a lot about each other, with Mike desperately searching for Will for the entire first season and staying by his side for the entire second season. Watching the first two seasons, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind that I am watching two best friends. However, not every friendship is going to go as smoothly as we hope. There are going to be some rocky patches and not everything is going to work out in the way that we had dreamed it would when we were younger. Mike and Will clearly care about one another and will are able to push aside their differences to help each other if they're in danger. I know that there wasn't much of a resolution to their issues in season 3, so seeing them have so many times to just sit and talk in season 4 and begin to work at regrowing their friendship is just refreshing and exciting to see. I still have a lot of mixed feelings about Mike in season 4, however, there was clearly a lot of things on his mind during the majority of the season, so seeing him take the time to sit and talk to Will and apologize for what had happened to them during the past year was so nice to see. I had missed seeing them so much, and I'm really hoping that this is building to them re-establishing their friendship and becoming best friends once again in season 5. They have the strongest foundation for their friendship out of the entire group, and I hope that is utilized more often. In the end, I trust that Mike and Will will find their way back to one another and back to being best, the best friends that they once were, and hopefully the writers will see that and will follow through with that they have been setting up with the two of them since the beginning of the show. These two are best friends, and if I don't clearly see that in the next season, I'm going to be very disappointed. In the same way that Mike and Will were each other's first best friends, Mike and Elle are each other's first loves. We spend the first season getting to know them in the same way they are getting to know one another. It's so fun to see them grow together this season, and I love that we get to see how their friendship forms from the very start until the end of the show. We, for all of the other friendships, we don't really get to see where they start, so it's nice that we get to see this with them. The two of them really do affect the behaviors of the other one throughout the entire show. Elle's sacrifice at the end of season one and the trauma Mike deals with following it really shapes 
and I think is the biggest influence in his personality in the following seasons. He is a lot more closed off and a lot more nervous surrounding anything that Elle does. He's already lost her once and doesn't want anything else to happen to her that could mean him losing her again. This fear has caused him to be rather irrational in scenes, especially when it concerns Elle. Elle, on the other hand, cares very deeply for her friends and would do whatever it takes to protect them. And in the first couple of seasons, this is mostly just extended to Mike as she wasn't as close to the others. She leaves Hopper's cabin due to a frustration with his rules and a desire to see Mike again. Their reunion at the end of the season is one that I remember waiting for for so long and it completely lived up to my expectations and it also just showed how close the two of them had gotten in such a short period of time. We get to see a lot of the way the two of them operate in a relationship in season three and I love that it really just seemed like they were two teenagers who were in love. Even after breaking up, there are still so many scenes of them being concerned for the other's well-being and I just, I love that. Once again, Mike finds himself with a friend that he would do anything for and that would do anything for him. Those are rare and it's crazy that Mike is able to find two friendships like that. I do like that there's some realistic relationship issues for them in season four. We do finally get to see the culmination of Mike's struggle with expressing his emotions with Elle feeling as though he doesn't love her. As we talked about before, it just seems like their two love languages do not work well with one another. Given time and better communication, this is probably something that they could work through, but I'm not sure that it's realistic for them right now. One thing that is undeniable by the end of season four is that they do care for one another. Whether or not this will play out with them being in a relationship in season five is yet to be seen, but either way, we know that they will do whatever it takes to protect the other one. Mike Wheeler is certainly an interesting character who has been getting more and more hate as the show progresses. There has been a dramatic shift from the wide-eyed open-minded kid that we see in season one to the more closed off, insecure teen who struggles with emotions that we see in season four. While I have found this change to be rather realistic, considering all of the trauma that he has dealt with, along with his home life, and just the regular changes that come with being a teenage boy, it has become clear that others don't see it this way. Instead, they see Mike as this irredeemable character who has done immense harm to those around him and shouldn't be forgiven at any cost. I know it's a little extreme, but some of the takes that I've been seeing floating around on the internet have certainly felt this way. While I'm not denying that Mike has made mistakes, he very certainly has, I don't think that he should be condemned for an eternity for them. I think that this is just a good opportunity for him to grow as a person and learn from said mistakes. Despite being closed off with his emotions, he often is the one that talks a lot and has certainly felt like a main character for at least some of the seasons. I think that a result of this is that a lot of people direct their anger towards him for similar things that other characters have done as well. I think that at the end of the day, Mike is just trying his best, but he's still a teenager and an imperfect one in that. He is not going to say the right thing at the right time or behave in the exact way that others may expect him to, and that's what makes him human. And him being human, I think, is why I enjoy his character so much. Obviously, this conclusion has been a little bit biased, but I do hope that I came off as neutral as possible in the main portion of the video. Obviously, you guys are allowed to disagree with my takes, and I would love to hear why in the comments if you do. I want to have a discussion on this because I feel like it's a topic that we aren't really having a discussion on, and I'd like to change that because I think the topic is really interesting. So yeah, in the end, Mike still remains as one of my favorite characters, but I have enjoyed attempting to take a step back and try and understand why he has become the most hated character in the show. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. This took a lot of time to record and I have been working on this script for, hold on, I have it here. When did I, when did I make this? I created this document on July 10th, so almost a month ago. I've been working on this for over a month and it has taken a lot of work, but I am so proud of it. I am so proud of all of the research that I have done for it. And I really hope you guys enjoy it. If you did, please give this a like, subscribe, because I want to do more character analysis analyses like this. Like I've already started working on one for Steve. Um, so if you want to see that also please let me know in the comments and if there's any other character you think i should do an analysis on also let me know in the comments um 
anyways that's gonna be it for the video and i will see you guys next time bye